Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve minimum size subarray sum, lead code number 209. So we're given an array of positive integers called nums and another positive integer called target. Now we need to return the minimum length of a subarray whose sum is greater than or equal to the target. And if there's no such subarray, then we need to return zero. Okay, so let's look at this first example here. So given the target of seven and the nums array of 231243, three, well, the smallest length subarray that sum is at least the target of seven is four, three. So remember a subarray is any contiguous block of elements. So this is a subarray. This just on its own is a subarray. This is a subarray. So continuous elements, the smallest length subarray where the sum is at least the target would be four, three. And the length of that is two. So for this approach, we'd want to use a sliding window technique, and we'd want to keep track of the current sum of our window. And we'll initialize that to be zero. And we'll also keep track of the minimum length that fits our constraints here. So we'll just set that at infinity. And now we'll use a sliding window. So we set L and R both equal to zero. And R's job is to basically expand the window. So if we're right here, it would look like this window. And L's job would kind of be to contract that window. So it's going to keep making it smaller. So here's how we do that sliding window approach. So R says, okay, we're looking at this and we are going to increase the sum by that amount. So our sum goes up by two, or if this array was called A, it would basically go up by A at R. Okay, is our sum fitting our constraint? No, it's not. It's not at least the target. So we need to expand the window. To expand the window, we move R over, and that means we're looking at this part of the window. We increase our sum by the array at R, so it goes up by three. Two plus three is equal to five. No, that is still not enough. So a couple times, we're going to expand this. This goes up by one, six, still not enough. And now when we get over here, our sum is going to go up by two. So we now have a sum that fits our constraints. This is at least equal to our target of seven. Okay, cool. So we can see that we have a better minimum length than infinity. And so we actually got a minimum so far of four, but we're looking for a smaller one. So can we get a smaller one? Well, we'll try to contract the window. So we'll move L over here. And then we're now looking at basically this part of the window before moving L over, we need to make sure that we lose the sum that we had at L here, because you're going from using this number to now not using it. So our sum must go down by that amount. And now we are looking at this subarray and the constraint is not hit yet again. So while the constraints getting hit, we are contracting the window. And while we're not hitting that constraint, we need to expand the window to try and do so. So we will move over R, we'll get a sum of 10 right now. That is currently at at least the target. Okay, what is our window length? It is going to be four. By the way, you can always calculate our current window length with the calculation R minus L plus one. These are indices, so it'd be zero, one, two, three, four, five. We'd have R is four and L is one. So four minus one plus one is equal to four. This window length is four. That's just how you would calculate that. And currently we're hitting our constraint. We didn't find a better min length because this is also four, but let's try and find a better one. We decrease our sum at L. So we're going to lose that number. And then we are going to slide this over here. We are actually still hitting our target and our window length would be three. So we found a better min length of three. We are going to keep trying to find a better one. So can we do better than three? Well, we move this over and this would go down to six. Okay, no longer hitting our constraint. We're going to move over R. We will add three to get up to nine. Okay, cool. We're hitting our constraint yet again. We have a length of three. That's not any better. Can we get a better one? If we move L over here, we would go down by a value of two to hit a sum of seven. Great, we are actually still hitting our constraint and the min length is actually better. This is a length of two. So we found one of two. Can we find one with just one? Well, we would move L over and we'd see now we have a sum of just three. Okay, not hitting our constraint. We would move R to the end of the array and that is when we complete. So as you can see here, we would end up with our min length of two. And that's a great approach because this is going to be big O of N, basically because we just move L and R through the array. And the space complexity of that is actually going to be O of one. Sliding window does not take up any space. 
Okay, so we're going to get our min length, which is initialized at infinity, and this is how you would do that. Our current window sum is just zero, and we'll initialize L as zero, and we'll actually use a for loop over R. So we'll do for R in the range of the length of the numbers. So R's job is to expand the window, so our sum is going to go up by nums at R, and then while we're hitting our constraint, so while our sum is at least the target, in that case, we have a current valid window. We need to write this down to see if we got a better one. So we'd set min length equal to the minimum of itself and the current window length, which we can get by R minus L plus one. So if we found a better window length, then we would write that down. Otherwise, we would just keep it as it was. Now, can we find a better one? We want to contract the window, aka move L forward. And so before we can move L forward, we need to lose that value we're gonna lose. So sum is going to go down by nums at L, taking it out of the window, and we need to move L forward. So this is gonna keep running while that window is valid. We'll just keep finding better ones as long as we can. And then when we get out, we will no longer be hitting that constraint, and R is going to work to try and find that again. After that is all done, that will be done in O of N time because L and R just go through the array, and we can go ahead and return our min length if the min length is less than infinity, or if it's still stuck at infinity, that means we never hit a valid window, and so otherwise we would return zero. So this approach is going to give us a big O of n time complexity, and it doesn't take up any space. As you can see, we're not storing anything. You can see it beats 88%. <laughs> that really doesn't say what the graph shows, but that's fine. Anyways, here's our code, guys. Drop a like if this was helpful. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.